Hey John, introduce yourself please. I'm John Bumgar, I'm the Chief Technology Officer for the United States Cyber Consequences Unit, which is a strategic tank think that uh, provides research to the U.S. government and other entities. And um, you guys just published a report recently, I understand a lot of it was classified, but it was about the Georgia and Russia uh, cyber war. Could you talk a little bit about that, what your report found? Well, I mean, the, the things with the report, the unclassified version of the report, uh, found that a lot of the actors that were involved were Russians. A lot of Russian sympathizers also from multiple countries. Uh, we had countries involved from Ukraine, Latvia, Russia, Mo and from Moscow itself. We had the people from the United States, uh, San Francisco area. Uh, that were involved in the attacks. Now, when you say involved, were they acting participants? Acting or, participants. Uh, so they, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were actually collaborating online in, uh, in hundreds of blogs and forums online, um, talking about the attacks, what they can do to increase the attacks. Some of the, some of the people that were involved in San Francisco um, wrote very efficient attack code and posted online that anyone could download and utilize. Some of the attack code also used components from commercial vendors. They just wrapped a wrapper around that code to make it more efficient and weaponize the code. Wow. And all this code was uh, quickly disseminated online and as the attacks progressed over day one, you know, August 8th, right. as they progressed into August 9th, the attack code started improving as it progressed because more people uh, got involved and you could tell the proficiency, their technology proficiency of the people were involved because you could tell that some were very efficient coders that were involved. Now were those guys, I know there's some debate about is cyber warfare real and that was the Russian government even behind let's say the attacks in Estonia or even Georgia, it's, were those actors Political. I mean, obviously they were political, but were they were they state sponsored or? Well, it's hard. It's hard to identify an actor as being a state sponsored actor. Yeah, that's I mean, what I was getting the at. The problem with cyber conflicts in general is that attribution is a problem, and people want to uh, try to point a finger at a single nation state, and it's very difficult to do that. Why? And, and the behind the reason behind that is uh -huh. because this the trail of evidence. You, if you go back and look at the North Korean attacks where the people said it was North Korea attacking the U.S. and South Korea, those attacks, uh, some of the command and control systems to now, you know, that were used for the botnets were in the United States. Some of the attacking systems themselves were New Zealand, Australia, China, Singapore. Okay. So how do you actually say that the North Koreans were responsible for it? Right. Now if you go back to the Georgian attacks, it's very easy to point that back to Russian actors because some of the systems that were utilized were owned and operated by Russians. Okay. Some, of the, some of the systems that were used had been utilized in previous events, cyber crime activities, by right. Russian nationals. It were the codes in Russian as well? Uh, or there were, were several multiple of the botnets. Languages? One of the major botnets we used was, was a Russian botnet. Okay. The Black Energy botnet, uh, the codes, the, most of the code is written with the help files all in Russian language. Interesting. So now, one big question that's out there is cyber warfare a reality? Uh, you touched upon that, but well, can cyber, you explain more? Cyber warfare uh, so far has not been a reality. Okay. We, still, we really haven't seen a real true cyber war yet where it's state on state warfare where there's no connect activity. So right. Warfare in general has changed. Now most wars or even any regional conflict will have a cyber component. Just like the Georgian conflict when they had the military aggressing across the border into South Ascensia, mm -hmm. we had the cyber component start right after that. And okay. so we can see future conflicts where a cyber component will be very important. One of the things that I just wrote about is computers as being used as instruments of war. Mm -hmm. in, the, in the future, we have the potential to have militaries and even civilian actors launch very devastating cyber strikes against a nation. Okay. So who, who's at risk then in a cyber attack? You mentioned anybody can do this and obviously people's computers have been hijacked and used as netbots attacks. Can yeah, you explain more about that? Botnets in general are very, I call low spectrum weapon. Right. Um, there's, I have a, a chart that breaks down the spectrum of weapons. Right. And, and the botnets in general, denial service attacks are in a lower spectrum. There's okay. much more devastating attacks like in, for example, trying to take on an oil refinery 
you could attack an oil refining and disrupt the uh, the burner system for the BTUs, increase the temperature, and cause it to have a catastrophic failure. Wow. Um, that that's the potential. But in general, I mean, anybody can be involved in a cyber conflict. Right. It can be you know a nation state. It can be a terrorist group, you know, or some green movement group or some uh -huh. political action group. It could be even a common set of citizens that have some type of objective. I mean, they can coordinate via instant messaging or Twitter and, and collaborate in real near real time to mm -hmm. plan and execute a cyber attack. So and everyone's can be a victim of cyber attack. It can be a, a, a nation state can be a victim. Mm -hmm. um, it could be a corporation that someone don't, doesn't agree with their policies on, right. you know, like the G8 or G20 or the UN, um, when they're publishing some type of human rights report that may not look favorably on another nation state. They, be, they become a victim of some type of cyber conflict. Or it can be you know, a bank or a restaurant that's overseas. Who, it, it, any of these can be a victim of the conflict. Who's more at risk though? Is, is well, the biggest private people, enterprise? The, the biggest people at risk right now is private enterprise. Okay. If you look at America, we have um, one of the statistics which is very low, they, it's wrong right now, it says that 85% of all the critical infrastructures are owned by private sector. That is actually much higher than that. Okay. Uh, the US government <laughs> owns very little critical infrastructure. So all these, companies that own our critical infrastructure, not only the United States, but the United Kingdom, um, Russia, China, most of these infrastructures are owned by private companies. Their bottom line is important and spending money on cybersecurity is not always the best thing. Hmm. And sometimes some of this equipment that's put into the electric grid or water systems have been in existence there for about 30 years. Wow. So the vulnerabilities but that, you know, were not even thought about 30 years ago are now becoming a problem. And in the future, we're going to have more problems. The United States and the UK are pushing um, energy, depending, you know, energy security mm -hmm. with um, with the smart grid technology, uh, green energy. Those yep. things are going to potentially make us more vulnerable if we don't start looking at those in the future. And we need to look at those things now because then eventually we can. Someone's going to write a worm. It's going to take out a bunch of electrical meters potentially in a hospital, or they're going to take out a solar array that costs multi-billions of dollars, mm -hmm. and we're going to have a major problem. And do you think adversary countries or states are looking at that, at, at our uh, our potential weakness? I mean, what's the probability, you think, that they would take advantage of that? There, there's you... already, there, I know there's already individuals that have already footprinted some of our critical infrastructures throughout the world. Really? So yes. the, I've heard some comments made that the internet can be shut down in 30 minutes or our no, power the, grids could be it, shut down for six months. Is, it's, it's, it's not that the internet can be shut down. I mean, you would, it would take a, a big attack to try to shut down the internet. It would, okay. have, it would be very difficult to shut down the internet. All right. It's just not, you can't turn one switch. Sure. Taking down an electrical system or taking down a chemical plant or taking down an oil refinery or causing a, a manufacturing company to fail or disrupting drug supply it's very easy to do if you if you're a skilled attacker. Yeah, that's scary. It's <laughs> very scary. <laughs> and then one last question: you mentioned too about people using botnet attacks, uh, coordinated attack. But I know that even myself at home, my computer is at risk. Do you think uh, the government should be working harder to educate people to make sure that we don't have a lot of these computers just sitting out there? Well, President Obama, uh, if you've been following him, he's the e-president, as you know. Right, sure. Um, he's the, he uh, really understands technology. Right. And one thing that the President, o President Obama has done in his administration is started uh, pressing a public-private partnership. And if you go and read some of the doctrine that's been coming out of the White House and out of the Department of Homeland Security, you'll see that they're really saying, telling Americans and others that they need to secure their systems. And so uh, the UK is doing the same thing. So security really starts at home, right? But in order for that, we need to start educating our our citizens more. Got it. Okay. Sounds like a lot of work to do, but it's progress is being made, right? There's a, there's a lot of work to do, and it'll probably take years, if not decades, to fix these problems. Wow. Okay. Well, especially when the stuff moves lightning fast, <laughs> that mm -hmm. may be a problem. That's right. All right. Well, thank you, John. Thanks All very right. much. Thanks.